You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Well, hey, folks, thanks for joining us today on this episode. It's a special episode, and I've got a very special guest here today with me, uh, Mr. Eric Yant. Welcome, Eric. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's man. Always uh, good to talk beagles. Yeah, that's that's going to be the topic today, hunting beagle format. But uh, you work the night shift, so we're recording pretty early here in the morning. Oh, yeah. So earlier than normal <laughs> for us, but we're trying to work around your schedule a little bit. So I guess you did a, a day's work, and then from there you come in this morning, and you haven't even been to bed yet. Nope. There's not many things that'll keep me up, uh, <laughs> but beagles will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that probably kind of works out, because you, do you ever just run in the morning after you get home? most of the time that's yeah. when i run probably yep. kind of works good for you yeah it's nice it's yeah. peaceful out there most people run in the evenings yeah. i just go out in the morning well deer season's in so you got to have some uh you got to know where you're turning dogs loose this time of the year yeah in Michigan. you be careful yeah hmm. have you been deer hunting a little bit too i've been deer hunting yeah. went out the first three days of the season haven't done much since but yeah yeah I know this fall, every fall, you and your dad and maybe a couple other guys go up to, what, Canada to go bear hunting? You've already done yep, that trip, Yeah, right? we did that back in September. Oh, yeah. So we're back, and uh, we got uh, two out of three of us got bears up there, oh, so yeah. it was a successful year. Yeah. How many? You've been going up there a lot of years. Yeah, I'm probably about 10 myself. Yeah. My dad's yeah. been going a lot longer than that, probably 20, 25 that's gotta, years. That's got to be a blast. It really is. Yeah. It's just nice to be out there. And, yeah. You know, not often you get to see a bear yeah moose you yeah know, wolf we have a few here in the state of michigan but most of them are further north a lot further north yeah. than where we're at but yeah. yeah uh then at some point you also usually make an annual trip up to the up and do a little yeah. air hunting up there Absolutely. in the fall that's coming up winter time yeah yeah we'll yeah. be up there in another week oh yeah so yeah. yeah i've been up there several times and uh man the tracking has just been great the population's been good this year so yeah it's nothing uh, better than running them hair that's oh, for sure it's fun man love it i me too i would <laughs> give up two days of cocktail hunting for one day <laughs> for of sure hair. for sure that's yeah. just me but uh yeah hey let's get uh let's get with it here and and uh, uh i want to cover our big five for next year just uh some of the details that we have we have most of them in place and everything for next year uh, but that's what I want to talk about here in this episode. So we're, we're going to talk about the Eliminator uh, that's coming up, the first of the big five NHBA days in March, Hunting Beagle Nationals in April. And then uh, we cap it off in the fall with the Don Sr. McVeigh Memorial in September and then the World Championship in October. So I want to kind of talk about those events. So yeah. And then also maybe we'll cut or uh, touch on the Clash of Champions and some of the Pro Slams and and speaking of pro slams, let's start with that. Last weekend, uh, as of this recording, we had our very first uh, pro slam, UKC pro slam, held in uh, uh, West Milford, West Virginia, hosted by the South Harrison Beagle Club. I always get the city and the name of the club <laughs> back <laughs> yeah. mixed up sometimes. And I got to go back to the system <laughs> to make sure I get it right. Great group of guys yeah. out there. I mean, yeah. you couldn't pick a better place to have the first one like oh, that. Oh, man, they did a they did a great job. Yeah. You know, Mitch and, and the club and everything, they did uh, – they did, uh, a, they really set the bar high. You know, they did, uh, bios for each one of the 16 dogs. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that they had now, they already, you, when you get a reservation, you don't actually enter a dog in advance for a pro slam. You just get a reservation, but they already basically touched base with those guys. They knew about what dogs they were going to hunt. So they did the bios on the dogs. They had, they did online Calcutta's leading up to it. Yep. That was a fun thing. I saw Allison Merritt kind of helped them out with that. Yeah, I seen that going on. So that, that, was, that was fun. Yeah, looked yeah. like a lot of fun. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, anybody could play with that. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah. A lot of people love doing that stuff. So, yeah. you know, you get to bet on dogs. Yeah. Uh, then they, the other thing they had, they had two shotguns that they were going to do drawings for all the participants on the morning yep. of the hunt. They did that. Uh, Turns out, uh, Atlee Lambright, we both know him. He's from Indiana. Yeah. He won one of the shotguns, and then I guess Gerald Burke from Maryland won the other one. Okay. You know, so just things like that. Uh, they set the event up with non-hunting judges. They're not required to in the first round, but they, they wanted to, and they and they did. Uh, then after they had cast drawn in the morning, they uh, did the uh, 
uh, Mitch went on and did a live recording of talked about the cast matchups and each one of the dogs in those casts and and while the casts were out, that made it interesting. Made folks follow along and and really made it something. Yeah, it keeps you interested and yeah. kind of uh, you know what's going on a little bit more than just yeah. hearing. Hey, there's a hunt going on. Yeah, like you can actually yeah see it happening. In yeah, a way. and it was just and you know the other thing we, when we set up the pro slams, we were really. It's not for everybody, you know. It's a, oh, it's sure. a higher entry fee, and it's going to yep. also have a higher uh, payout at the end of it. Yeah. But it's not. It's not. You know, most people or a lot of our folks, it's not something they can afford or not to do a whole lot of them. And that's it's not for that. It's kind of for those that can't afford it, want to do that. But the other thing we thought was that it would probably, if you're going to put up a three hundred dollar entry fee, you're probably going to make sure you have your dog ready. And you're going to bring it a, a decent dog yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. so I think with the 16 dogs they had there, that wasn't just your regular 16 dogs you might see at a regular trial. You know, you might see four or five of those really top end dogs, but these were all very capable dogs that they had out there. Oh yeah, you're going to bring your best if you yeah. pay three hundred dollars. Competition was good. Yeah, all the way through, and you saw that on those matchups. That yeah, it's like holy cow, you know. I seen all those 16 dogs, and I knew most of them. And I was like, wow. You, yeah. Good luck trying to pick which one's yeah. going to win that. Yeah, for sure. So, like I said, man, Mitch and the whole crew and the club and everybody, they really set the bar high for them. Yeah. We really appreciated that. Great you know, club. So, yeah. And it's the same club that puts on the uh, Eliminator now. It has the mm -hmm. Eliminator East the last couple of years. But, yeah, so they did the uh, they did the basic 16-dog hunt, 16-dog um, uh, pro slam, and uh, it, that comes with a $3,900 purse. So first got two thousand, second got eight hundred, uh, third place got six hundred, and fourth place got five hundred. Uh, so yeah, they had the. Uh, so that was the very first one. November eighteenth was the date on that. So it was just this past weekend. I'm not sure when this episode is going to air, but it's uh, it was from the time of this recording. Recording it was literally last weekend. Here. Yeah, but that's... a lot of buzz about it too. Oh yeah, you wouldn't know. I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Paying for your weekend plus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so we we uh, you and I talked a little bit before here, and we've talked about this uh, whole uh, pro slam deal before. We don't want to schedule a whole lot of these events. You know, we have we have the rest that we have scheduled as of now. We may schedule another one or two, but we have the full circle bash for cash that's coming up in Pennsylvania around Waynesburg, there, Amity, Pennsylvania. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, Justin Schaefer's club in December. Uh, that'll be the second one. And then in January, we have one out west in Missouri. Uh, that one they called Show Me the Cash uh, the, in the Show Me State there, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that kind of is, is kind of <laughs> fitting. That's in January and uh, in around uh, Wasola, Missouri, I think that is. And then in February, we'll have a 27-dog one at the uh, called the Tri-Valley Showdown. And that's not far from Zanesville where we have the Nationals. Okay. So in, in Dresden, Ohio there. Yep. Uh, and that's going to be a 27 dog one. So that's a little bit different. And those are all three dog casts in the 27 okay. dog one. So uh, a little uh, different. Yeah. It's like an AB hunt where in, in round A, they'll take 15 dogs. We'll hunt together in five three dog casts. And then B, uh, be 12, uh, three or 12 dogs and be four three dog casts. Okay. So that makes a total of nine casts. But that's what's huh. unique about that 27 dog one three dog cast. Yeah, yeah, it's and that's that still pays for yeah, that that, pays pretty good, pretty good. It really. just gives more dogs an opportunity. It does, and you know, area. really, I could enter a dog in A and B gives guys the opportunity yeah. to get more than one reservation. Hunt one, hey, you got a couple good dogs yeah. in your kennel, get them both yeah. out there. Yeah, so for that one, they're going to run A and B in the morning, and then midday for B or like eleven o'clock or so, and then they're going to run their. You win your cast there, you advance to the semifinals. So in the evening, on that first evening, a Saturday evening, they're going to run that uh, those uh, three casts. You know, okay. nine dogs yep. is what they should have. They'll run three casts, and then those three winners advance to Sunday morning's final cast. Oh, that's an interesting yeah. format. Yeah. yeah, it is. You know, so for a three hundred dollar entry fee, when you're cast one time, the least you're going to get is four hundred dollars for that. So, and all that information is on that's, our website. Is great. Far. And then uh, Indiana, they want to have one in Indiana and that will, that one's not been scheduled yet, but that'll probably happen at the tail end of the spring trial season. Okay. After the hunting beagle nationals and all those are over with. And yeah. Uh, 
So I really, really, the idea now anyways is to not really have these, have these kind of outside of the busy trial schedule, I guess. Yeah. Well, it also looks like we're moving around the country, give lots of people the opportunity if they want to get in one. Yeah. They can find one in their region. Yeah. And and not just these uh, pro slams are also kind of set up for, you know, there's other guys that hunt other formats and other registries that are kind of draw yeah. their interest and that's good we want to see them come over and try and more we the had, merrier bring yeah them in. absolutely there were several that did there in, in west virginia this last weekend yeah. let's hey let's uh, cover those winners really quick here so uh, in the end you can go on our uh, beagles of field facebook page and folks can see all the matchups all 16 of them there or go to the south harrison beagle clubs facebook page and they can see everything yeah. that they did there and and i invite uh, folks to go check it out they have a lot of footage there a lot of coverage uh, but first place overall was the dog out of Indiana. Uh, uh, cross country legs matter. That was At- Atlee Lambright. Ended up winning the whole thing there. He won the gun there. Yeah. Was a, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty he, good weekend. He, he had a great weekend. <laughs> he was telling me I took him his check last night, uh, and he he only lives about twenty miles from me. So yeah. so we met uh, halfway there, and and I told him I had his check, and I just hand delivered his check to him. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but he said that he got into some other little raffle thing that he also won there. Oh, so wow. he couldn't do any wrong. No, that was a great weekend. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Uh, second was Brent Springer's uh, dog. He's from Ohio Spring Creek Hurricane that was handled by Zach Bowersock. He took second, 800 bucks. Uh, Nick Brady's dog, High Times Maximus, was third. He took 600. Uh, that's dogs out of West Virginia. And then here's another West Virginia dog, Big Gunner, Hoopwood Big Gunner, owned by Sean Vaughn. I think he's from the Charleston area. And uh, actually, that's a that is a dog that big gunner dogs. One I was I've heard of him, but I wasn't familiar. I think he hunts mostly little pack and maybe some PKC. Okay, is, is that somebody you? Would... I'm not familiar with the third and fourth dog. Yeah, uh, the first two I've run against a yeah. few times. Obviously, Fifi I've run against yeah, yeah. numerous times. But yeah, but this uh, big gunner dog, he's a good looking sucker. I don't know yeah. if you saw those pictures. I did. That's yeah. a good looking mm-hmm. sucker. But. Uh, yeah. Sean seems to be a really nice guy, and from what I know, but uh, yeah, he ended up fourth there, and uh, is, is they had they talked a lot about this hound, so I guess he's okay. done quite a bit of winning already. He's he's a fairly young hound, still a 2021 model, but uh, oh. he is a Deepwoods uh, uh, or uh, let me see here. I'm looking at his pedigree. Uh, oh, uh, Logan Elm Black Butcher's the sire, and uh, uh, Licking River Gypsies is damn. So uh, yeah. He is a big meadows bred, top and bottom, basically, is what it is. That's yeah. a popular name out it that is. way. It is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, congratulations to him. He won, uh, like I said, 500 bucks there. Third place dog is a young dog that's just literally turning not even a year old yet. It's going to, it has a November birthday, November 23rd. So, today's the 21st. So, won't be, a, he'll be a year old here in a couple of days. <laughs> But I know Nick, yeah, Nick Brady from West Virginia, he's told me about this dog before, and he said he's just a, a little beast, you know, and dude, hmm. he's got high hopes for him. But uh, so he is off of uh, his high times Odie dog, who is, I happen to have a litter, litter mate to that dog. So I'm very familiar with that uh, uh, pedigree. And then the dam is high times Maddie, uh, Maggie or McGee. I'm not sure what they call this, uh, call her, but high times Maximus is his name. And uh, he is off of uh, uh, Odie, who is, goes back to uh, Grub Farms, Hank's little Charlie. And then the bottom side is brush axes. Uh, bring home the bling is on the bottom side, I guess, of that pedigree. But uh, actually, I on the bottom. Maggie's pedigree looks, uh, ooh, she's bred to the hilt too. Wilson's Izzo and Big Creek Nice Cream, some of those AKC yeah. dogs that do a mm-hmm. lot of winning up here in Michigan, actually, yeah. large pack yep. stuff. Hair stuff. Yep, hair stuff. And uh, yeah, Green Bay, uh, there's Ninja Blue Boy. Yeah, so a lot of good breeding there. That dog's bred to the hilt, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so congratulations to Nick. Then second place, as we mentioned, was uh, Brent Springer with uh, Zach Bowersock handling uh, Spring Creek Hurricane. They won. Uh, they came up uh, uh, second place, and that dog is sired by C and I's Red Bull of the Woods. Now, I've heard of that dog, but I've I've never ran with the dog or no, anything. So, uh, uh, and then uh, Hall's Little Pepper. So it's uh, some. I think it's some of that Fox Creek breeding from from okay. Ohio is probably what yeah. what it is. So yeah. And then the winner, overall winner, is Cross Country Legs Matter and uh, Atlee Lambright uh, from uh, LaGrange, Indiana. You know, so we've known him for a good oh, number yeah. of years. And 
<laughs> Great he's, guy. He is, and he's had some good. He's had some good, good dogs and a lot of success in the last four, five, six years. Mm-hmm. But uh, that cross country name comes. Most people don't know this or a lot don't, but he is a marathon runner. Yeah. That's where the cross country comes. I always in. joke with him about that. Yeah, running to the hunts and stuff. Yeah, he does. I, I can run. He can. He runs like a deer, <laughs> and he's built like a little marathon yeah. runner. You know, yeah. he doesn't have a lick of fat on him. <laughs> no. But I remember I drew him several years ago. I drew him at a, just a local trial here. It was seven o'clock in the morning. Somebody else entered his dog and brought his dog, and we had to wait on. He drew my cast, and we had to wait on him a little bit. Mm-hmm. He ran seventeen miles before the event that yeah. morning. I've heard him say that numerous times. It's he like, ran before. It's like, what? What the hell? <laughs> but yeah, so uh, his little uh, Fifi is what he calls her. Legs Matter is a registered name, uh, but she is sired by uh, Trevor McQueen's world champion, TNT 3MC Raising Kane. And then the dam is JJ's True Line Josie. I think that was an AKC dog that yeah. uh, the bottom side there goes back to the Osable River stuff that from up north here in Michigan as well. So Yeah. Very More. well bred, and yeah. Obviously, that's a very good dog. Hey, I've uh, I've ran with her a lot too. You know, mm-hmm. since she's been a pup, and uh, she's been good since the time he started trialing her. Yeah, she was a good dog. You know, I I was talking to my nephew last night about her a little bit, and he's he says she just every time he's been with her is probably a good uh, a good note of that is, is she's just the same all the time. Yeah, I just love her hunt. She finds rabbits. Yeah. I mean, she's got great line control and foot and all that. Just good all around dog. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was, hey, we weren't surprised to see him do well or no, do good. Not at you all. Know, but, but that goes for, uh, there was 16 nice hounds and they're good hounds. So yeah. You know, but uh, yeah. And he said, he told me last night, she just really looked good in the, especially in the first, uh, first cast. And, and then the second cast, middle of the day, I guess it got a little tougher, but they hunted for two hours in both of those casts. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Not a bad time to have a good yeah. weekend. So congratulations <laughs> to all those winners, and, uh, and the club did a bang-up job putting it on for sure. So next one will be in Pennsylvania here in December. So, All right, hey, let's move on to uh, – let's talk a little bit about the – want to mention just a little bit about these standings. So we the dollar amounts that these dogs earn at the Pro Slams, we have a standings now set up. That goes on the dog's record in addition to the monies that they earn in the Clash of Champions. Okay. So, for, you know, as you know, we've had two years now of Clash yep. of Champions, so we already have a kind of a list established there. And then just like Fifi here, uh, Legs getting in, she was not on our standings list, but she won $2,000, and that puts her in. We have our standings list uh, separated by males and females, but that puts her in about uh, one, two, four, about number six in the females with uh, with her uh, $2,000. That's impressive. Yeah, one yeah. one pro one, slam yeah. like that. Well, considering the yeah two females at the top are yeah. the Clash of Champion winners, they are so. two ten thousand yeah. dollars winners. So yeah, yeah. So they're currently currently tied, but uh, one of them get a placement here to pro slam. That'll separate those two. Yeah, but yeah. And then the male side, you know, uh, Butler's Tank leads that to part with twenty five hundred dollars. So yeah, this will um, something. Something that people hey, you want to go out and win yeah. some money, you got yeah. you got another opportunity. Well, hey Eric, let's move on and talk about the Eliminator coming up. That is the first uh, major event each year uh, on our schedule. One of the first of the what we call the Big Five. So we yep. have an Eliminator East and West. So folks can go to whichever one they want. They happen on the same day, February seventeenth is a Saturday and then yep. the 18th. So it's a full elimination event. The East is held in uh, West Milford, West Virginia, hosted by the same club we were talking about that put on yep. the Pro Slam. And then the West uh, is uh, in Ava, Missouri, uh, hosted by the Douglas County Beagle Club, an yep. event you've been to a bunch. Yep. I was just there uh, two years ago at their Eliminator, and then last year I went to West Virginia. So I've been to both of them recently. Yeah. Just good places to run either place you go. Yeah, in the middle of February, it can be, the weather can be a little bit of anything. Yeah. But sometimes it can be dang good, too. Yeah. Last year, we had pretty good weather in West Virginia. The year before in uh, Missouri, we had just a little bit of snow, but the running was still excellent. So yeah. just you never know. And it, that it, that event always draws good on both sides. Absolutely. Usually, usually the bigger entry is in the east. You know, obviously, we have a better or a bigger network of clubs yeah. and, and UKC hunters in the east than we do the west, maybe. But... Uh, 
Man, I think last year they had, what, 170 dogs there? Yeah, there was quite a few. I think it was a record. They had an incredible prize package for everybody out there, so that yeah. drew even more people to yeah. come out there. So they put their work in for that. and yeah. So did Missouri. Missouri yeah. put their work in, and uh, yeah. they're both good hunts, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the hunting is a little bit different, you know. In in West Virginia, you're obviously going to be in little little <laughs> yeah. up and down country versus yeah. over there. Missouri is pretty yeah. much uh, pretty much a lot flat, flatter, you know? which yeah. is what I'm used to. <laughs> you can go out to these mountains, yeah. puts a hurting on me on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, so that's the first of the big uh, big five. So some of, let's talk a little bit about some of the specifics for it without going into. There's event ads that we have on our website. Yeah. And that's on Beagles of Field as well. You can see all these uh, notes that we're going to talk about. But it's a full elimination event. You win your cast, you move on to the next series. Plus points or not. Is plus it? points or not. Plus points aren't required. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, a cast win also qualifies you for the world championship. Yeah. Now, this isn't just like your uh, regular WQE only, uh, but it does a cast win does qualify you. Now, the, the one thing that's going to be different starting this year that I want to make sure folks realize is before we used to qualify, the only way you'd qualify for the world is if you had plus points there. Yeah. A total score of plus points. Yep. Even though it doesn't require plus points to move on, you still had to have a plus point score to be qualified for the world championship. And let's say you had a dog that didn't have plus points, moved on the next series, wins the next cast, with plus points, now it qualified that dog. Yeah. But that became kind of hard to track, and it just seems, frankly, it seems kind of dumb. <laughs> We're changing it. If you are a cast winner, you are going to be qualified. Plus Nothing points or not. That. No. So that's the new change starting this year. Yeah. You win your uh, first round cast at the Eliminator, you're qualified for the World Championship. Hey, if you're going to advance in the hunt that way, you might as well qualify that yep. way. So, you know, back in the day, you know, we used to have a lot, I say a lot, we had quite a few full elimination events. Yeah. You know, and with, and that was, they were popular, but in today's world with the cast win format that we have, we just don't see very many. We have this one still in the world championship, you know? Yeah. Now there's other events that are kind of, you'd consider like semi-elimination maybe, but not full elimination. Yeah. No, there's really but, nothing else I can really think yeah. of. But and it, and it's kind of cool that you know this first event of the year like that. When you're cast, you move on. You end up with one hey, at the end of the day. Everyone's always said, you know, it doesn't matter what spot you go to, as long as you win your cast, yeah. you advance. I mean, it, it used to be in the past. Sometimes you had to go to one of the best spots because you could because advance, score, matter, score mattered came a lot into more. Play, right yeah. now, it's, hey, win against the three or four dogs yeah. you're competing against, and yeah, you know, move on. Yep, yeah, exactly. So this is also the first uh, place where we have what uh, I've always kind of dubbed as a prep hunt for juniors on Friday at the Eliminators. Yeah. So if you have a, this is now going to be the third year we, we've do, uh, we're we doing it. The first year we had uh, more entries than I would have expected. Last year it nearly doubled. And uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of that stuff. But Friday, uh is junior day at the eliminator you no know, pre-entry or anything like that and that's the case with the uh, eliminator on saturday and sunday there's no pre-entry or advanced entry go to the event you enter there yep. on the day of uh, but the junior hunt is going to be on friday and now some of the specifics for that a junior or a derby we call them juniors here i guess they have to be to be eligible to hunt in this hunt they have to have a birth date of may 1st of 2022 or after so, you know, basically a dog's not going to be two years old yet. That's yep. going to be eligible here. Uh, they do, uh, you can single register your dog at the event, your junior there. But if you do, and it's not UKC litter registered to where we have proof of birth date and stuff, yeah, you can single register it there and be entered in the event if you have uh, proof of parentage uh, through AKC. Like okay. so if you have it litter registered through AKC or maybe even registered, that yeah. would be one... Uh, one avenue of showing proof yep but that's the only way and that's just to make sure we have the dog's birth dates right absolutely yeah. yeah it's nice to be able to run against dogs of your own yeah. age you know and that's that. kind of a fun little hunt yeah. too like that you know, oh yeah kind of turned out pretty there again that same club that had the pro slam they do a great job promoting it and absolutely i think that makes a difference too for sure and they do the same out west so yeah can go to do a great job yeah 
So, like I mentioned, I kind of call these call that a prep hunt because we actually have a junior national championship, yep. <laughs> you know, a month later. So this is kind of a good little mm-hmm. prep hunt for that, or a month and a half later. Um, for the junior hunt, the first round cast win, dogs uh, get a cast win there. It does go on the dog's record and does plus points again are not qualified or uh, aren't required there, but uh, mm-hmm. get a cast win there in the juniors, get a win towards your dog's degree. Mm-hmm. They they draw out together regardless of whether they're a champion or a registered or yeah. what have you. So, yeah. um, now the one question we get a lot, Eric, is, uh, if that qualifies a dog for the world championship, like it does on Saturday oh, and yeah. Sunday, yep. and it does not, you have to enter the, 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 uh, eliminator to be qualified. Yeah. Now these juniors, even though they hunted Friday, they can enter the eliminator, Absolutely, too, but yeah. then now they go in their regular category. Mm-hmm. Well, actually they all draw out together, I guess. Yeah. So, all drawn out but, yeah. But so if they get a cast win there, they would. So, but all those oh, event wow. details are added in the or uh, are noted uh, in the event ads. So, yeah. yeah. Alan, we both had Daltra Pathfinder twos now for a little while. What do you think about yours? I'm liking mine. One of the things I had the opportunity to now download a map of an area where I did not have service, and I've used it there, and it has worked flawlessly. I love it. Yeah, I love the crystal clear maps. I love that I never lose reception on my dog's collars anymore. Highly recommended by me as well. Dog Trip Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar of UKC. So, Eric, there's one thing that I kind of uh, missed and didn't talk about a little bit, going back to the backing up a little bit on those pro slams. Where do you, where does somebody go to get a reservation in the, and you oh, go yeah. on to our uh, website, everything is done in advance. There's an opening date, which is exactly one month, 30 days before the event date is mm-hmm. when the uh, reservations open. They always open at nine o'clock in the morning on that day and uh, folks can go there. You don't enter a dog, you just get a reservation. So that's how okay. that works. I forgot to mention that here a little Pretty while simple ago. simple online. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, done online. So, mm-hmm. And as soon as entries are full, then they're closed at that point. Okay. You know, so that's why it's kind of important for guys that make sure they get their entry in to make sure they get in if they want to go. So, so yeah, let's move on to uh, the second. Uh, we talked about the Eliminator, the first event of the Big Five. Second is in March, uh, March 15th through 17th is uh, NHBA Day or NHBA Days, National mm-hmm. Hunting Beagle Association, our uh, Chartered Breed Association for this format. Yeah. Waynesburg, Pennsylvania this year. Yeah, we've been there before. Yeah, a bunch of times. Man, <laughs> yeah. that's a good place, isn't it? It is. Yeah. A lot of rabbits around there. Yeah. Once again, great group of guys there in Pennsylvania. Yep. So. That and in a great group, a great crew uh, steering up there, heading up the NHBA Association yeah. as well. Just a bunch of guys and uh, gals that just love the sport. Yeah. And they really want to give back. Wow, do they give back. They do. They I do. Mean, just looking back at uh, this past weekend, I believe it was, with some of the youth going out deer hunting. I mean, that's – what more could you ask for for them to, to give back like they do? Yeah, you know, they get that. That's through their uh, through their youth program that they have, yeah. you know, and, and they have great prizes like the deer hunt, like you mentioned. So it's, right. that's why it's so important to go to a hunt like this because the the more – you know, entries and all that that they have, the more money they can give back. Yeah. And the prize packages, yep. the youth hunts, all that stuff. So, yeah. And at all of these major or the big five we're talking about, they have a presence at all of them and they're yeah. doing raffles and good raffle stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And, but they raise a lot of monies and, and do a lot for this for yeah. the program. It's a great weekend. It great is. Great hunt to go you know, to. Not just the kids, but that's for everything. Another thing that they have is a sectional series. Yep, that runs throughout the year, and that's a competitive, oh, competitive deal. You know, it's uh, this year was incredible for how close the race was. Yeah, I mean, it literally has come down to the end, and we have one more hunt left. Yeah, you had the, what you just came off the Iowa State Championship, Ohio State Ohio Championship, State Champ- yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that I mean the shuffling there, holy smokes, shuffled first, around a little bit. First, first through eighth, well. Hey, I got, I got some standings here that I uh, that I got off their website, and I think it was before the Ohio State Championship. So yeah. you, you were there, and you can kind of tell yeah. us you're familiar with it, but you can kind of tell us what, how the shuffle happened. So they had the last standings they had listed showed uh, Butler's Lone Ranger uh, leading the herd, 
And what you're trying to do is get in the top eight of the sectional series, yes. right? Finishing yep. in the top eight. Mm -hmm. So you had Butler's Lone Ranger leading the herd there. Heat em Up Superstar second. Deep River Bad Company in third. D'Agostine's Misty fourth. Butler's Tank in fifth. And then D.T. Barton Sarah. That happens to be your yeah. little female oh that God. you uh, just won the Ohio yeah, State Championship with. with yeah. I forgot about that. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then seventh, Stacy's Mountain Outlaw Reba. And then eighth was Heat em Up Gus Gus. So you're saying there's been a little shakeup now. Yeah. So how did that shake up? Well, the top three all stayed the same. Yeah. Um, but Gus went all the way from eighth. Now I believe he's tied at fourth. Oh yeah. With uh Tank. Yeah. And then after that would be my Sarah female. And then uh Reba and Misty are seventh and eighth at the moment. Okay. Um, and I think Misty would be seventh and Reba eighth. Okay. So, there's, and there's no other dog that can catch those seventh and eighth place dogs, really? No. Okay. No. It's the top eight's definitely set. Okay. But there still could be, you know, there's Some a shuffling with two around points, a little so there still yeah. could be a little shuffling. Yeah. But, yeah. Pretty was, interesting. That's a competitive race. Oh, I mean, you just look at how close the, these yeah. points are. My gosh, I mean, yeah. you're separating a few places by one or two points. Yeah. Uh, Ranger, you mentioned Point Ranger shows here to, with 50, and I don't know what he has. I don't know if this is up to date or how up to date it was, but 42 and then 41 between, you know, one point between second and third. Yeah. And then fourth through, or fourth through eighth, fourth has 34 points and eighth has 31 <laughs> here. Yeah. Well, that's why literally fourth and eighth just about flip spots. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Gus had a good weekend at the Ohio State hunt, and he yeah. jumped right up there. And Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty incredible how close this race was. And, and not just that, but then the NHBA, we talked about prizes and raffles that they do. Mm -hmm. They have a huge, huge prize package for these dogs. Oh, here. the top eight. You know, I even mean, the eighth place. Yeah. Is, gee, many Christmas. That's like a first for a lot of other stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, not only do you want to finish in the top eight to help you with the clash of champions possibly, but you're winning an incredible prize package. Yeah. I mean... You're not going to find that at many hunts. Yeah. So. Yeah. You mentioned the Clash of Champions, what it does, the top eight. If you finish in the top eight in this series, you get a first round bye yep. in the Clash of Champions. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's kind of a big deal. Oh, yeah. 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 Whichever region you go to, yeah. you know, you, yeah. your dog gets to sit out one round yeah. and be fresh for that next round. Yeah. Yeah. As an advantage. It. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, uh, yeah. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a great series. It always has been. Yeah. It's always fun. And yeah. those, I mean, that top eight, those are some incredible dogs. Yeah, those are the top are. dogs. They are. At most hunts, yeah. you're going to find them dogs up there at the you top know, somewhere. Uh, Butler's Lone Ranger, he is. He has hit a record for cast wins this year. Yeah. He's just had a phenomenal year. If I'm not mistaken, he just about or maybe did. Would a, or, uh, let me make sure I say this right. Just from this year's cast wins, he may have been a UKC Hall of Fame dog just from this year. Yeah, I know. I, think, I mean, I, that is incredible to I think know. about you know, how many it, cast wins that takes. Yeah, 50. I think, yeah, it's 50 cast wins, and I think that's about where he's at. It's crazy. He's close. You know, you okay, you've been around for a long time, and we talk about a lot of the old dogs. There were some dang good dogs back yeah. in the day. Mm -hmm. But. Man, where's a where where did he come from? Where, where's a dog that show me a dog that has that many cast wins in a year? Has it? It's no, it's never with, happened. With the new format we have, obviously you have more of an opportunity, but you still have to do it. You have more opportunities to win more casts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this dog's not mm -hmm. winning against just ordinary dogs. Yeah. He's competing against. This top eight. I mean, I've yeah. run against him numerous times yeah. and lost to him numerous times. Yeah. So he's doing it the right way. He's yeah. not, you know, going to small events or anything. He's going to pretty much all the big, big five we yeah. started talking about, yeah. all your state hunts. Yeah. I mean. And he's, he's a, he is a Hall of, all over he is, the country. He is a Hall of Fame, though. Yeah. That's just, just uh, crazy. There's a. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Love yeah. He's from uh, my neck of the yeah. He's up here in Michigan, neck, Homer, neck of the Michigan. Woods there, yeah, so Paulus. I get to see him a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then they have that other dog that's not a bad uh, a bad outfit either. You know, a tank. You know, they do quite a yeah. bit of winning. Yeah, with they're him, in but, the well top four right now. Yeah, 
Yep. Pretty sure he's tied at fourth at yep. the moment. Butler's tank. Yep. There you so, go. Yeah, and he was leading it for quite a while. Yeah. yeah. So he he came out of the gate firing yeah. right away. So yeah. So well, like you said, got one more event so he could shake up a little yeah, bit. So, they're, but they're it looks still, like looks like Ranger pretty much has it wrapped up. Yeah, that top I don't. Spot. Uh, the top top three is not going to change. Yeah. But there yeah. could be some shuffling after that a little yeah. bit, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Then they also have a program for the show. Um, so I took those standings. Uh, last I saw was uh, Burke's Little Miss uh, Molly, uh, which she's a national grand champion, uh, leads that leads that uh, the show portion of the series, uh, 13 points there. And she looks, she's almost doubled uh, second place there. So yeah. she's pretty much got it wrapped up. That's a dog that's very familiar on yeah. little lemon colored Angie Vandergrift has yep. that dog. A lot of great a lot looking of, dog. Yep. Won a lot of shows on uh one at uh, the Nationals, their national grand champion title on it. Mm-hmm. Uh sitting in second right behind her is uh, this last year's world champion, uh, yeah. Mike Higby's dog, No Cures Angel Maker. Yeah. Sitting right there in sixth. And uh, you know, there's a guy, Mike Higby, we talked about the uh, West Virginia, you know, or yeah. uh, Missouri, I mean, Missouri, having yep. the, the one of the eliminators. Um, there's not all that many shows for him to go to out there, sectional shows, you know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, he comes over here to the East a lot yeah. and has competed in a lot of the sectionals and yeah, sitting in second. Mike's been around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. He goes a lot of hunts. Yep. And then, uh, third, Sam Buff from North Carolina, uh, Rebel Red Heidi. Now, I've never, I hadn't heard of that dog and I actually looked at her pedigree when I, when, when, uh, when I put her on the list here. Mm-hmm. Sam Buff is he has that podcast uh, yeah. Buff in the Rough or something Buff like that. Rough, so, yeah, yeah, a little plug for yeah. Sam here. <laughs> There's a lot of Beagle Beagle podcast yeah. stuff. Uh but that dog is off of a world show champion. DT's Max Ollie was a dog out of Missouri that won our world show. So Okay. And I forget what the bottom site is, but so yeah, there you yeah. go. It's a, and I want to say that Max Ollie is a dog that came out of Germany, I think. Oh wow. Don't quote me on it, but I think that's the dog that came out okay. of Germany. Yep. Hmm. And then fourth and fifth, there are a couple of Jeff Stacy's dogs, uh, Mountain Outlaw Casper and Reba. But I don't know names. if you know how, if that has changed much. I'd say Molly's got it pretty much wrapped yeah, up. Yeah, I would say so. I, I, I don't know if anything's changed on yeah, that. Yeah, so, but yeah, yeah, you can go on to the NHBA's website. They do have a website and, and all that. But yeah, folks, don't forget the, the second event, the uh, major event of the year, March 15th through the 17th, NHBA Days in Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. Be looking forward to that one. Oh, I love sure. going to it because I don't have. Sometimes I can hunt a dog. Yeah, it's kind of one where I can sit back. You don't and have, have to fun. worry about being behind the desk. I know. You know taking care of stuff. You just relax and have yeah, fun. Yeah, take a dog yeah. out there, and I'll, I always <laughs> look forward to that one. That yeah. one in the McVeigh hunt, I can have. Yeah, fun. sit back. And, I I miss that man. Yeah, you it's, know when you when you get a chance to do it, it's like you think about it even more. It's like man, I would <laughs> love this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, Clash of Champions will follow that a couple of weeks after that. March 30th and 31st uh, is our Clash of Champions regions. Now, these are for dogs that have earned at least five cast wins in the calendar year before this. So in this case, mm-hmm. for 2024, is going to be five cast wins this year in 2023. Nope. Any dog that has a uh, has got five cast wins is going to be eligible for that. Eligible for ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand to win it. It's thirty five total purse yeah. sets up, but ten thousand to win it. Yeah. So that's, that's our biggest purse for Beagle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of cool. And you if you make it to the uh final runoff there on Thursday at Nationals, yeah. you're automatically winning you some are, money. You are in the money. Take the top so, thirty two to, yeah. to go to. So yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the other thing I think that it really has kind of accomplished what one of our goals was, and that is once, if you have a grand, you know, just like a ranger, you know, okay, he's running for, and these, we talked about these sectional dogs, you know, they're running for something else. But outside of something like that, there's really not a whole lot for a dog once it's finished a grand. Correct. You know, yeah. maybe qualify for the world, go to the world. But now you have, you want to get at least five cast wins to qualify for this. And I think that's helped. Yeah. Everybody more, kind of benefits. Clubs, yeah. everybody. Yeah. There's more entries because you're going to yeah. keep running that dog. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, oh. so it's it's kind of worked. So we have uh, four different uh, regions again, and we talked about, as you know, we kind of had it. We had uh, talked with some of the reps and things about maybe making some at some point making it a standalone event. 
Yep. And uh, maybe that maybe that can happen here this next year. It's still scheduled for the for the where we have it have had them for the, all three years now, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson, PA is one. So that's up there at Waynesburg, basically. Mm-hmm. The club that's hosting it is located in Jefferson. It's right next next door, basically. Uh, Mountain City, Tennessee. Uh, La Fontaine, Indiana, which is basically Huntington. Huntington. Uh, mm-hmm. The Magenica Club yep. has been around forever since day one, pretty much. Yeah. And then out west, Ava, Missouri. So those four locations. Yeah. Right where the world hunt's going to be. Yep. So here again, you choose where you go. And this is an advanced entry again. And you uh, you choose which one. Your, UKC will send out invitations around the 1st of February, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Middle of February, maybe. Don't hold me to it around there. First part of that. First of February, I guess. We will send an invitation out to all dogs that are qualified, the owners, first owner of all dogs that are qualified, um, and with with the details, you know. And those entries are online, and they open at the same time, which is February 1st. Or they can call the office, and we can get them entered there. So they decide then which one of those four regions they want to go to, and that's where they go. Yeah, that's and, nice. It gives you an option. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. don't have For to. For whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah. like, you know, if you prefer to run in pennsylvania go to pennsylvania you prefer mm-hmm. to run in missouri go to missouri i mean you got all kinds of choices yeah yeah it's nice you don't have to stay in your particular area mm-hmm. yeah you know and here's the thing it's just because you know pennsylvania has always got the most entries for this. yeah but it all that doesn't really change anything because mm-hmm. it's prorated we move you mentioned you know there's 32 that move on to the finals and those 32 are all mm-hmm. in the money then but it's prorated based on the sure. total entry and the number of entries at each event. So just like Pennsylvania, just because they had more entries, they're also going to send more on. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes it uh, a little fairer. Yeah. You know, if you want to say yeah. That, you know. So just because, uh, yeah, it's not just X amount from each one. It's oh. based on the total entry. Yeah, that they had there. which is good. And we announced that we can't, we don't know what that number is until we have all the entries in. So on mm. the day of, morning of, or couple of days before that we'll we'll announce it on our uh platforms and then at yeah. the event they'll also know how many we're mm-hmm. going to advance from there yeah so yeah like mentioned uh they will move on to thursday at the nationals is when we run the finals at zanesville ohio thursday thursday there it's a good way to kick off a big weekend yeah yep sure is so yeah so hey hunting beagle nationals that's the next one in line then that that comes up then in April, April 19th, 20th, and 21st. So that's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday yeah. next year. My favorite hunt every year. Yeah. It's the the one hunt I look forward to more than any. The fun one. Man. Gosh, I love it. It's, a, it's you know, okay, I can't hunt in it and this and that, but that's also a fun one to put on. I just think it's right in the middle of your best running. And middle of April. I've always felt that, that let's have our dogs at the best and the rabbits are running the best. It just, it takes out some of the luck, in my opinion. It, your good dogs usually will do well that yeah. weekend. Yeah. Yeah, so here at the Nationals, there's a lot going on. You know, some of the features that we have is, like we mentioned, the Clash of Champions finals. We have an awards banquet on Thursday night. We have four licensed hunts, on two on Friday, two on yeah. Saturday. We have a show, a national show. We have a kids bench show. We have the junior national championship that we talked about a little bit, yep. you know, that the, the first hunt is at the eliminator, you know, and then we do have a junior national championship and uh, three national titles are awarded there. One for the, the grand, the dog that wins the grand division, grand, uh, grand uh, hunting beagle division is going to be, get a title of national grand hunting beagle champion. Yep. And then the same thing with the show, the dog that wins the grand portion category of the show is going to be the national grand show degree winner there. And then thirdly is going to be this junior national champion. The winner of that is going to get a junior national. And that just keeps growing. Yeah. I mean, the numbers, wow, people are really starting to run these young dogs and, uh, yeah, the numbers are showing it. You, You know, so last year, the dog that won the juniors was sweet tea. Yep. Not yet two years old wins wins the had junior. a pretty good weekend. They had a very good weekend, and then goes on and in the nationals. You know, a couple of days later, she ends up in the in the championship Sunday. Yeah, you know, I don't think she made it to the final cast. I I don't think I, I maybe she did. She didn't win it. She no. might have made it to the final cast. 
trying to remember if she did. Uh, and that, that information's on the website. I wish I would have looked that she up. She did but, for champions. I think she did. Yeah, she was in there. I judged it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I, but yeah. she was like maybe third or fourth. Yes. But still mm -hmm. impressive. Just wins, you know, wins yeah. the junior national championship. And then, uh, uh, but also, not just that. She won the Clash of Clash Champions, Champions. The day, on, the fr on Thursday. I just remember, I, I might be wrong on this, but she hunted somewhere around six casts that weekend, yeah. five or six casts. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot for a dog in yeah, one and weekend. a young dog like that. And young dog. I mean, what a career that dog started off having already. Yeah, wins the Junior National Championship in 22, <laughs> comes back, wins the, wins the Clash against all age yep. dogs in 23, and then... You know, two days later, she's in the final Finals cast of the champion champions. division at the national. Yeah, pretty impressive. impressive. Yeah, very impressive. You know, and and it just really solidifies that uh, that junior national win. Yeah. For. Mm -hmm. But there's some nice up and comers like yeah, we saw a bunch of them. So yeah, just a lot of fun stuff. So a um, couple things. So we have a double header on Friday, so that means two hunts. We have a morning hunt and a afternoon afternoon slash evening hunt on Friday. License yep. hunt. Same thing on Saturday. So we have a total of four hunts at the Nationals, and uh, we take a maximum of 120 entries for each one of those four events. And they are separated by uh, four categories, basically. So you have your juniors category, uh, your registered category, your champions category, and your grands. Now the juniors, that junior dog, they if they're going to run in the junior division, so to speak, in that category at the Nationals, they all draw out together, even if some of those juniors already have a champion title on them. Yeah. But they still run with everybody. Yep. Unlike the rest of them, registered, open registered dogs that don't have a title, they run together. Champions all run together. And then the grands run together in their own yeah. category. So four different ones. So I mentioned the reservations for each of the four hunts. You get that on UKC's website. Um, we'll have uh, all of that information is out there on our platforms and our ads and a link we'll be posting links on facebook and stuff like that um and we uh, again we take 120 dogs in each one of those four uh hunts that i mentioned yeah. two for friday two for saturday entry fees 40 bucks and those reservations open up on march the first so and you don't enter a dog again that's yeah. something that's kind of new we've done it now a couple of years but yeah but that's nice though. works good yeah you don't enter a dog. You just get a reservation. Yep. And and for each one of the four hunts or how many ever reservations you want in each one of those four hunts or whichever one, yeah. you decide. You choose what you want. You choose what you want. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, you decide what dog you're going to put in that spot on when you come to the event. Yeah, so you have lots of time from the time you get your entry to when you decide which dog I want to run. Yeah. You know, you could have a female coming season. You decide, oh, hey, this dog's doing a little better than yep. my older dog. I'm going to run this one. So. Yeah, a lot more customer friendly. Yeah, I think. yeah. Just, you know, in the old days, we did enter a dog, you know, and like you said, dog came in season. Like, yeah. You didn't have a substitute or something. You were just kind of yeah. out of luck. It just, it makes it nicer on, you know, UKC's end, too, because you're not switching dogs yep. out all the time. Yep. That. It, so, yeah. And, uh, you know, so, uh, and the one of the differences as com the first year, if you had a reservation, the dog you entered, we required that it be a dog that is in your has your name on yeah. it. Yeah. But we have since changed that. Last year we changed it and it worked fine. So it doesn't even matter. If you have a reservation, you can enter whatever dog you want. Yep. Doesn't even have to be have your name on it. You just have to have that reservation. Yep. And maybe maybe you don't maybe a dog you were gonna hunt is uh can't hunt or you wanna save her for a different one of the other four hunts. Yeah. And you basically can't use your reservation. You can give your reservation to me. Yeah. You might just come up on the day of and say, hey, <laughs> get in line and say, hey, uh, Alan's got my reservation yeah. right here. He's taking my reservation. No, no problem. And I heard of a few of those last year. Yeah, there people were. People were looking yeah. for entries and yeah. other people are getting that's, away. That's right. You know, because like I said, they they close when 120, as soon as there's, there's 120 in each one of them, they close. Yeah. So. They'll forever be closed after that. So. Hey, things change. I mean, yeah. So it's nice to be able to yeah. go use somebody else's entry if they're not going to use yeah. it. Yeah. So March 1st is when they open $40 to enter in, in advance there. And uh, uh, I think last year they all filled the first three filled. So both of Fridays filled to max. The one Saturday morning did, but the one Saturday evening had some openings, I think. Like yeah. Like maybe 10 or something, 10 yeah. or 12. 
And the nice thing I like about this is, you know, if you're not able to get off work on Friday, you can still come Saturday and you have a chance to compete in whatever uh, division you decide to get in. Yeah, so, well, one of one of the one of the things you're going to talk about here in just a little bit, and we'll we'll touch on that and why that's kind of a kind of a big deal, really. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, so uh, walk ups. We do accept walk ups on the day of the event. But that is only if any one of those hunts haven't filled yet at that yeah. point. Let's say we have some entries and whoever's first in line is going to, you know, you're going to take that. But then the fees are 60 bucks. So okay. better served to do a, an advanced entry. But yep. So the hunt details for that, they're uh, Friday and Saturdays, four hunts that we're talking about here. They're all 90-minute hunts. Uh, and But here's the thing. You hunt the dog, the same dog, in no more than two of those four hunts. Yep. And you pick which four hunts you're going to put them in. You don't have to tell us, UKC or anything. You decide there and then. Yep. Uh, and it doesn't, they don't have to both be Friday. They can be, but you can mix it in any, however you want to put this dog in any of the, yep. any of the four hunts twice. Yeah. But uh, it doesn't matter which. Some hunt. people like to hunt a dog in the morning and a different dog in the afternoon because the way they run. Maybe, yeah, and maybe you might have the other dog you're going to run. You think you have, uh, you might, you might be better in the middle of the day, you know, or in the evening yeah. or whatever for whatever reason. Some dogs run weather, better. Weather might weather, be a, weather might huge be, factor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the heat if if it yep. becomes hot. Yep. Well, I got a dog that doesn't run well in the heat, so I'm gonna run it in the morning. Yeah. Another dog that you know runs yeah. just fine in the heat. Yep. So. uh Two hunts, no more than two hunts. And a total score, again, is of plus points is not required there to be considered a cast. It's just nice to have options. Mm -hmm. You're not locked into anything until that uh, that day, that round. Well, so, you know, and it's going to take, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, what it takes to get into the championship Sunday round. And that's yep. the double cast winners are going to be considered first. So, But when we have, when you don't allow a dog to enter more than two of the four events, you mentioned somebody can't come on Friday because of work or something. Yeah. They still have a legit chance with a dog. Maybe Absolutely. not with two dogs now, but with a, with another dog. Absolutely. You can come and run twice on Saturday. Sa Saturday, right. Or, hey, come on Saturday and have one big score and yeah. grab a dollar dog yeah. on Sunday yeah. or yeah. Saturday afternoon. So juniors, again, uh, the juniors are going to, that's going to be another category outside of, like we mentioned, they're outside of the registered champs and grands. So juniors, again, they have to have a birth date born on or after May 1st of 2022 to be eligible here. Um, again, single registration will be accepted here. Um, and again, if not litter registered with UKC, they need to provide a copy of AKC papers for proof of age yep. purposes. They don't have that. We can single register them, but we cannot. Uh, they can't run in the junior division. Yeah. Just got to prove uh, the age. Here is something new to this year. Uh, again, is uh, juniors can now also pick any of the four hunts. Yeah. The first uh, first two years, we just had all juniors. If you're running a junior, mm -hmm. you had to run on Friday. Yeah, one of the two hunts on Friday, or both on Friday. Yeah, but we had plenty enough, and the reason for that was basically did not want to have to where if we only had five dogs in a hunt, five juniors, it'd be just a three dog cast and a two, two dog, yeah. and did not want that, you know. Sure. So, so, but we had plenty of dogs, and I don't think that should happen. So we opened it up to you pick same way of whether yeah for, as the other categories. You pick any one of the four. Once Doesn't again, have, it's good yep. to have those options. Yep. You don't have to run the dog twice on the same day if you don't want to. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um. Again, juniors may go in the in the junior category based on their degree, uh, or in the junior class. Where all degrees or all degrees draw out together, but but they can't go into both. And we get this question. Hopefully, I can explain this correctly. Is uh, so if I have a junior and I I I run, I may be entered in a junior class, and uh, maybe can I now go run in the same dog for a cast? Maybe I get a cast win for a junior. And maybe that is enough to get me in the top 16 yeah. or what have you. Mm -hmm. Can I now go run the same dog and also try to get in the open registered yeah. top 16? The answer <laughs> is no. no. You decide. Mm -hmm. Whatever category you run first time with that dog, that's where you're going to run. Well, you're running those finals on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So you can't, yep. you know, the juniors are going to go out Sunday morning along with your champions and grands and registered. So yeah. you can't run it in two spots, yeah. obviously. Yep. So, uh, hey, one other thing I want to touch on that happens, and it happens, it probably will, it has it did last year a couple times, and that is a dog that only needs, let's say, one win to become a champion. 
Oh, yeah. That comes into play sometimes. So uh, the question is, can the, you know, what do I do if I, if I get a cast win and finish my dog on Friday morning? Where do I go from there? Mm-hmm. The answer is that's up to you. But if you want to be a, uh, if you want to be eligible for the registered category, registered category championship on Sunday, you need to continue to run that dog in that category. Yeah, that's where you started. It is. Just finish the weekend yeah, out it that is. way. Yeah, so that makes that, sense. Yeah, that comes up. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Uh, but yeah, here in just a little bit, let's uh, let's get into the championship uh, Sunday details. All right. All right, Eric, but before we get into that uh, championship Sunday stuff, uh, what do folks need for to enter their dog at the Nationals? And the answer to that is just bring your easy entry card helps the best. Yeah. If you have your dog's UKC number, that's going to be the quickest. You don't even need to fill out an entry slip. You just come up to the entry line each morning of the hunt, mm-hmm. and uh, with your dog's UKC number, we will enter it in there, and uh, we will, we will uh, print out the labels so they don't even okay. have to do that so that's pretty simple too. simple yeah. yeah and it doesn't take long at all no but if they have their ukc number that's going to help the most so yeah yeah so uh yeah so what does it take to get to be uh to qualify for the top 16 in each one of the categories so we'll have a top 16 juniors that's new this year that top new. 16 yeah. new that's one thing that's that makes new. a lot of people happy that will <laughs> before we had just a four dog finals yeah. on sunday but we are going to take the top 16 hey the entries have increased why yep, not exactly and i think that's they're they're gonna like that so uh uh yeah, top 16 juniors so you have the top 16 juniors top 16 registered top 16 champs and top 16 grands for sunday's championship yeah so that's four casts in each round in the first go around and those cast winners advance to the to the the final so yeah double cast winners is what we're going to take first you're going to be in and then followed by single cast win scores you know let's talk about that just for a second when we first did that we got a a bunch of folks talking about okay now high scores are going to come back into play and we were always kind of with this cast win format we kind of you know said hey the score is not a big deal anymore but when we bring this in that was kind of the thing hey now you're bringing high score in but that has been a irrelevant. No, for sure. Just, you no, know, you're going to get a couple of high scores. There's going to be some, but they're going to be so far up in the top sixteen. It's not even. It's a mute point. Yeah, right? they're almost not going to be a factor. They're not a factor because they're already in. So it's, yeah, you win your cash with a few hundred points, three hundred points, maybe you. You got a good possibility yeah. of getting in there. A couple of cast wins, you're going to be in for sure. Oh, but there's two. Yeah, you know, if we we look at the total number of grands that we have, and even the juniors and. Maybe we shouldn't say anything, but uh, it's, you know, guys are going to have strategies. Oh, for sure. And there's some guys that <laughs> don't even realize it until yeah. after it already happened. Is like, dang, why did I do that? <laughs> yeah. You know, so, you know, just like for a junior, you know, if I got a junior running in it, I might try to get that one out of the way as soon as possible and, and you know, get a cast win. Because yeah. if I have one cast win... Mm. Very they're, good chance. They're all going to get in. You know, there's a chance that they're all going to get in. Yeah. It depends on the numbers, how the numbers work out. Yeah, sure. And the same is uh, same is kind of true for grands, you know. So, yeah. I know now, champions last year, I was fortunate to make the top 16. Yeah. I don't rem- I want to say I only had like maybe 400 points at yeah. best. Yeah. And my dog made the top 16. Yeah. On that one cast win. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. You don't need huge scores. Yeah. Oh. I think folks were surprised how many, you know, if you had your, if you had one cast win and how if you had a cast win and how many didn't actually get in. Yeah. You know, a lot of them were surprised that they got in. So yeah. Just the way it works. And because there's so many things going on now, especially with this, adding this top 16 in the juniors, I think that's going to open it up. There'll probably be less double cast winners in champs and registered. I would guess so. It. Yeah. Yeah. More people might be trying to run juniors. Yeah. Though. Yeah. So. All right, so there you go. There again, uh, plus points not required there uh, to get in the top 16 if you were a cast winner, you know. So, but anyways, so, uh, but yeah, anything else you want to add to the Nationals? Fun event. It's, once again, my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love We've, it. We've, uh, and it's a great facility there in Zanesville there at the Muskingum. Used to have Great a hard time. Used there. to have a hard time pronouncing that, but it's Muskingum, <laughs> Muskingum County yeah. Fairgrounds. So it's uh, probably well, I wouldn't say probably. It's our largest largest hunt. Yeah, as far as people go. Yeah, I mean, and entries. Yep, 
just a lot of people come to that. Yep. Nice, clean, nice, clean building there. And oh, yeah. And, uh, lots yeah. of parking, lots of room. Camping, mm -hmm. bring your yeah. bring your campers, whatever, hookups there, everything. Yeah. Got a lot going on at the Nationals for sure. Yep. And, uh, a good kitchen. Yep. Just a, a lot of good things. And yeah, they fun. do an excellent job, those clubs down there yep. to come together for that. Yep. Do and excellent. most of the hunting. The other thing with the on Sunday that has really worked pretty well is on Sunday we will send all the grands to one location to hunt. Yeah. And they just stay out there. Their cast winners just all yep. meet. There's a designated meeting spot. They meet and they just finish it right well, there. You get not a quicker. bunch of traveling yeah. back and forth. Yeah. You eliminate that extra time it yep. takes. And that'll be the case with all those four. Mm -hmm. We'll send each category to, uh, to their own. Yeah, that unique. worked well, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So that kind of wraps up the spring. Uh, the first three of the five, you know, that are in the yeah. spring, it kind of ends with the nationals there. You know, yeah. there's also a lot of state championships going on in between and sectionals and yeah. stuff like that but <laughs> let's uh just touch on the the two of the fall events that kind of wrap things up for the for the hunting beagle stuff as far as the the majors go first is uh, the don senior mcveigh memorial uh the weekend after labor day nope. so there's another fun one oh my gosh the the amount of things that they do for the the beaglers over that weekend is amazing i mean you don't even have to be a beagler to come to that. I mean, yeah. I, you look at all the people there. I'm not so sure that there's more people that aren't beaglers that come to that hunt. It's it is. <laughs> they do an incredible, incredible job there. I mean, that, that McVeigh family is a great family. And, I mean, if you're going to go support something, go to that. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of fun. A lot going on. This next year, the dates are going to be September 5th. That's a Thursday. 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, so... And it kicks off with a Thursday night hunt, so it's late afternoon hunt. Yep. They have that first hunt there. Well, that's different. That's it's it interesting is. because yeah. all of our hunts you run in the morning, you run midday. Yeah, I, I mean that's the first one that really you run in the evening. Yeah, you know, so it's nice, just something last, different. Last year they had over a hundred entries on Thursday <laughs> yeah. nights. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're finishing close to dark, but yeah, hey, you know, it's yeah. still fun. Yeah. So, and then they have a doubleheader Friday, so in the morning, and then another afternoon hunt, just like we do at National yep. that we talked about. Same thing Saturday, a doubleheader there again. And then uh, that is, and they have a championship Sunday, you know, yep. so they have a top 16. Now, the one thing that's different there, you'll have to look at their event ads and see if they change anything. They they have changed it up a little bit uh, from year to year. Last yeah. The last two years they put all the dogs together in one category. In other words, they didn't separate them by registered champs and grants. Correct, yeah. They all hunted together regardless of category. Yep. So I'm not saying that's the way they're going to do it this year, so folks will want to look at event ads or see if they have any changes there. Yeah. But, and you can run your dog in every round. Yeah, you can in every round yeah. there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thursday, so there's five five opportunities yeah. there. Yeah. Yep. Hey, you make the clash of champions in one weekend. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you, you really could. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> technically yeah and it's also a last chance qualifier for yeah. the world hunt mm -hmm. and it works it's worked really good there and we get they get quite a few dogs there oh, yeah, that didn't sure. get qualified throughout the year at the wqes yep come here for a last chance and they've got several opportunities mm -hmm. for it i know several guys that were i say i see numerous times yeah. people getting entries you know, because they hey, qualified we, there. We talked about Atley Lambright in this episode. He didn't get the he didn't get two of his his top dogs qualified oh, really? <laughs> until the the McVeigh hunt yeah. last year. He was doing other things and and he was yeah. kind of banking on it. he he got it done. Yeah, if you're not able to make some of the other qualifiers throughout mm -hmm. the year, that's good to be able to go for that weekend yeah. and have multiple opportunities and a lot's going on but one of the big things it's it's a beagle event and it's a competition but it's so much more you kind of hit on it a little bit yeah. but they have a huge raffle huge raffle what is it fifty sixty thousand dollars oh day? i think i think it was uh 60 some thousand yeah good stuff yeah good stuff what would they have one of those it's hard had to... a side by side this year uh yeah that was the the big prize they had numerous uh guns um a lot of guns there was a lot of tree stand uh, i want two items this i want to say a motorbike but a uh some, some electric bike i guess might yeah, be the right like word a for hunting it. bike or yeah something. so they had a i mean old randy moore was skating around <laughs> yeah, <that thing. laughs> fastest i've seen him move yeah <laughs> so yeah. yeah i mean there's all kinds of stuff like you you get drawn early it's like 
how do I pick which prize do I want? They're all good. It's like and a lot of yeah. them, a lot of oh. them, and, and you're right, good stuff. Yeah, Not stuff just, you're actually happy to win. Yeah, you know? yeah. I uh, I took I won twice this year. I got the, my ticket got drawn twice, and I got me two deer blinds. Yeah, you know, and it was, at the, and I was pretty yeah. honestly. That was pretty late in the, I won, in the drawing. One late and got a uh, trail camera, so that's something I can use. Yeah, you know? yeah, more than happy to do that. And a lot of good stuff like that. Oh yeah, dog boxes, just all kinds, all of good kinds stuff. of stuff. Yeah, and it's a good fun evening. That happens yeah. on Saturday night yeah. after, <laughs> after the cast come back, and it's packed. Yep, it is packed. So, <laughs> hey, one more. Let's move World Championship. That so that the McVeigh Memorial is in September, first of September, and then the middle of October, basically, um, we have the World Hunt. Yep, and that's the fifth and final uh, event on the majors or for yeah. major events of the Big Five. This year or in uh, next year, we are moving out west again, Mountain Grove, Missouri. Mm-hmm. We were there five years ago. Twenty eighteen mm-hmm. is the last time we were there. Going to the same place, Shetler's um, uh, Event Center in Mountain Grove, and it's just uh, a couple miles outside of town. Yep. Uh, nice road right up to the Event Center. Uh, again, uh, really, you were probably there last yep. time. Mm-hmm. Nice facility. It's kind of an auction house slash community center place. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Great place to have a hunt. Plenty of room. And yeah. Just once again, the club members out there, a group of guys and gals, they'll put on a great hunt. They did so last you, time. They've never been to yep. Missouri. It's a great time to go. Yep. You'll have is, a lot of fun. Know, and it's for some of the guys and the folks in the east, you know, West Virginia, Maryland. That's a little hall of Pennsylvania. Yeah. But, uh, man. When you talk about you want to have a chance to be put in rabbits, you're going to be put in rabbits out there. Yeah. I guarantee that. Yeah. So you, you're not going to be able to say, oh, you know, I drew a cast where we didn't run any rabbits. That's just, that's not going to happen out yeah. there. It's, 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 it's great hunting. And, and, you know, if it, if distance is a thing, man, if you can put it on your schedule, get your dogs qualified, uh, yeah pony up with a couple of your buddies and split the cost out there, yeah. the driving time, and you'll have a, you'll have a good time. Hey, those people travel. So we need to show them the love back and travel they, out there. They do. And there's a bunch of them that have yeah. been coming in the last five years, been coming to these events we mentioned, you know, yeah. even if they were out East and, Pennsylvania, you know, for the world hunt the last two years. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many we had there this year. We had a bunch of guys from Missouri come out oh, there. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I I would say 20 or yeah. so entries, yeah. if not more than that. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, those people travel. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm tickled to go back out there. Mountain Grove, Missouri. The mm-hmm. one thing that we need to, folks to uh, note is the date change this year because of yeah. their Deer seasons are, it's hard to schedule an event that time of year out there. Yep. So, but we got two weekends we can do it out there, and we set the date for October 18th through Sunday, October 20th. So we're what, one week later? Two than weeks later two than, weeks than normal. Okay. Yeah, two weeks norm, or later than normal. And the other mm-hmm. thing, hopefully that'll help us as far as weather. Might yeah. actually be a little cooler, cooler maybe. Yeah. Well, I was out there this year about that time for the Missouri State Hunt, and... uh the weather was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, and the, the other thing that they have this year there is uh, they have a brand new uh, Comfort Inn right in town there. Okay, yeah. So, uh, you know, folks like a, a nicer, newer hotel, yeah. like uh, and close. Yep, and close. Mm-hmm. They're all close. So, so that kind of that kind of covers all of our five events there, yeah. and uh, you know what's in between are all the local club or the clubs having their their regular events throughout the. Throughout yeah. the year, lots of state hunts, lots of uh, sectionals for NHBA and super yep. sectionals, classics. Yep. Just March is big, you know, the Eliminator yeah. in February. And then there's also the Indiana State Championship at the last weekend in February. Mm-hmm. Then March, we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, four, five, including your Michigan State Championship yep. at your club in March there. And uh, April is Maryland, Pennsylvania. Uh, state championships may the west virginia state championship june new york then in august we have the dale prunty classic and the southern classic that's uh pennsylvania and virginia events we uh talked about the mcveigh memorial their missouri state championship that's going to be about the third weekend in in uh, september this year that is a date change uh middle of october is tennessee state championship the week before the world this year 
and then the Ohio State Championship the last weekend, and then uh, wraps up Iowa State Championship, wraps things up That's in uh, up this November. Weekend. Yeah, it's this coming weekend. up this yeah this yeah. coming weekend, mm-hmm. and the same thing next year. So, uh, yeah. Well, hey, Eric, it was kind of fun talking about some of these events, yeah. and I appreciate you coming. Hey, it in. just it gets you to look forward till next year. Yeah, You're like oh, hey, a lot of good stuff coming. And up. we've had a really good year in the hunting beagle format this year, and yeah. Uh, at the the major events and uh, just getting better and better every year. Yeah, now uh, kind of the advent of these pro slams, uh, that's kind of piqued some interest, you know, and yeah. something to just something a little different, different, you know, for folks that mm-hmm. like that kind of thing. And, yeah, yeah, chance so, to win some money. Yeah, so after the World Championships, you know, for me is finally September. You know, I do a lot of the other stuff too. You know, yeah. for me, we have uh, squirrel dog stuff and. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, all, obviously all the coon hound stuff, you know, but so from September until the world championship is done in the middle of October, that's, I'm, I'm locked in up <laughs> at work, <Busy. laughs> you know? Yeah. But so when that world championship is done, when it's kind of finally, it's time to go. Yeah. Off. Yep. Bad thing is it's almost deer season. So it only gives me a couple of week window and then <laughs> yeah. I got to wait till after deer season. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you got to be careful during deer season. Yeah. But I've, uh, I enjoy that too. I still, I, They'll need to hunt my own dogs too. Oh so. yeah, sure, absolutely. So uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to to all these great hunts for next year too, and yeah, see yeah. What well, it brings. Hey, I didn't uh, mention. Most folks know that you're one of our field reps here for this region yeah. up here in Michigan as well. So appreciate yeah. everything you do, and mm-hmm. thanks again for joining me today. Here, yeah, no problem. It. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. Always good to talk beagles. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops podcast. Be sure to give us a follow wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss out on new episodes.